good? Good afternoon. Is everybody ready? Good afternoon. Um, I'm Jane Harmon, the president and CEO of the Wilson Center. You are in the Wilson Center. We have an overflow crowd in the Wilson Center. And uh, I understand this is the first public event that this distinguished delegation uh, from Myanmar is uh, involved with. So we are honored to host it uh, and to actually co-host it uh, with uh, um, the National Democratic Institute, uh, CSIS, the State Department, and the Institute for Representative Government. Um, I just came from a lunch with our delegation. There was a very candid conversation. Some of the people in that lunch are here, and the conversation will continue uh, during this event following uh, their remarks. Uh, I personally care deeply about the future of Myanmar, uh, to which I have traveled twice in the last year. I have met with uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, the lady, Da Su, uh, three times, and with a host of parliamentarians and government officials. In January, the Wilson Center presented Da Su with the Ian Ratiu Democracy Award. Uh, we traveled to Napitao to do that. Uh, my connection with her actually dates back to 1994 when, as a member of Congress, where I served for nine terms, I voted in favor of a resolution urging the government to release her from house arrest. The fact that she has been released, that she has been elected to the parliament, is not only a credit to her and to the millions around the world who view her as an icon for freedom, but also a credit to some people sitting here and to the president of the country, Thane Sain. It is an interesting and important transition to see those who were responsible uh, for her situation for two decades decide to change their views, to change her situation and to change their country's situation. And that transition is noticed and we have noticed it here at the Wilson Center. And it is important that we say that uh, as much as there is keen interest in her, there also is keen appreciation for those who have taken personal and political risks to change the way their country is governed and to open up uh, the country of Myanmar. Um, as a former legislator, it is a great pleasure to welcome this delegation of distinguished members of parliament, led by His Excellency Shui Man in the middle, um, uh, the, who is the speaker uh, of the, let me see here, P22, say, <laughs> ah, uh, the speaker of the parliament. <laughs> uh, I have been there, it's uh, in, in Napitao there are huge buildings, uh, and the parliament there is, is bigger, I would say, than our parliament here, and uh, very interesting. I commend it to all of you. Um, part of this introductory um, presentation is uh, some welcoming remarks from a dear friend of mine, Ken Wallach, uh, who is the, um, who heads uh, NDI, the National Democratic Institute, I have been an NDI junkie for decades, uh, going back before I was elected to our Congress in 1992. I went with NDI in the 1980s uh, to observe elections in uh, South America, in Chile twice, in Europe, um, Czech what was then Czechoslovakia and Hungary, and most recently uh, to observe the, the first free election um, in uh, Tunisia. Uh, a place I hope to return to soon. Uh, NDI and its brother organization, IRI, are crucial parts of the United States effort to build political <coughs> capacity around the world. It is only through political capacity that countries can transition to true democracies, and that is something that our friends in, uh, in uh, Myanmar understand. Uh, following Ken's introduction, 
we have two people to uh, lead, a, lead a conversation uh, with our members of parliament. I just want to mention one of them, uh, and she is Rangita De Silva de Alwes, who is a lawyer from Sri Lanka with advanced degrees from Harvard Law School, who is, I guess she still is, a professor at Wellesley. That's a lot. Uh, but she also directs uh, our Global Women's Leadership Initiative, which is a uh, very important part of the Wilson Center and which includes, uh, among other things, uh, the Women in Public Service Project, founded by uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, uh, who partnered with uh, women's colleges in our country and now women's colleges around the world to help women learn how to uh, fill public service jobs around the world. And our goal is 50 by 50, 50% 50 women in public service jobs by 2050, and some countries have already met that goal, not enough of them, not the United States, uh, but hopefully Myanmar will be one of those countries. So uh, please welcome uh, a man who has had a major role uh, in this town and around the world in helping countries transition to freedom. He is really, uh, you know, I always used to say he had the best job in the world, but that was when I was in Congress. Now that I'm here, he has the second best job in the world, Ken Wallach. Slowly, slowly and forcefully. Thank you, Jane. Um, I want to reiterate Jane's um, comments and thank the State Department, the Institute for Representative Government, uh, CSIS, <coughs> and particularly the Wilson Center uh, for this event. And I also want to thank uh, Jane Harmon herself for, first of all, her leadership in Congress for so many years. Uh, somebody who was able to cross party and ideological lines to forge consensus on many important issues, and now her leadership at this important institution. <clears throat> we are pleased, and the I is pleased, to co-host this forum to provide an opportunity to hear from Speaker Schwemann and his colleagues on the future of political, economic, and social change in Myanmar. <laughs> เอ่อปอเอาละดอกราอยู่ชิมานะเนี่ยพวกอะคูลายออกไปดอมาชนิดเวโกดีเอ่อวิลสันเซนเตอร์เนี่ยดูปูตัวไปดอมาจิ้ม
who, as you know, is now the U.S. ambassador to Burma. I think that visit had a profound effect uh, on me, and certainly it did on Derek. When Madeleine Albright spoke just a week ago at the University of Yangon, she spoke as a student of democratic transitions and as somebody who fled her homeland because of war and oppression. She spoke of the need for time and patience to build democratic institutions. To create a parliament that functions, courts that are fair, and security forces that will protect. And the most time-consuming requirement of all, to replace suspicion with trust, hatred with tolerance, and divisions with national reconciliation. But at the same time, she cautioned not to become too patient. For democratic transitions to succeed, time must be used wisely. And from NDI's perspective and experience, Democratic progress is inseparable from democratic cooperation. That, I believe, is the spirit of this important visit. And I want to thank all of you for joining us. Now I will turn this over to Rangita De Silva, at, to Peter, Peter Manicus, who is uh, NDI's director for Asia programs, and then to Rangita De Silva um, to moderate and do the proper introductions. So thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Ken. Uh, I'll keep my remarks very short, uh, very brief, because our, our time is very short. Boy, Burmese is a concise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, Ken mentioned that um, Secretary Albright recently uh, went to, to Myanmar, her first trip since uh, she had been there in, in 1995 as a uh, the UN special, uh, the United States special representative to the United Nations. Throughout the trip, there was a lively, lively discussion going on in regard to uh, the, the, the need for constitutional reform, strengthening the rule of law, developing an electoral system that's fair to all political parties and candidates, and bringing a lasting peace to the still troubled ethnic areas. These issues and others will be debated and hopefully ultimately resolved before uh, Myanmar's parliament. Um, I, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that, that parliament 
will be a, 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 critical, a critical element in uh, the success of uh, the, the country's uh, ongoing transition. NDI uh, is about to open a, an office in Napadaw. We have a USAID funded project that's designed to help uh, ensure that, that uh, Parliament has the resources that they need to meet the challenges that lie ahead. <laughs> We also have a, pr a program based in uh, Yangon that's uh, designed to, it works with uh, civil society groups and is designed to uh, expand uh, the public space in which uh, the, the discussions on, of reform are taking place. Uh, Myanmar's parliament, like the rest of the country, is changing very rapidly. It's adjusting to a new political environment in which Competition and cooperation are essential ingredients for moving the legislative process forward. Speaker uh, Shui Man and, and the delegation have, have done much to advance the, the reform process, and I think that that their efforts and those of others on, on reform really deserve the continued support of the international community. The speaker would like to make some uh, uh, introductory remarks, but perhaps first we could uh, Introduce the other members of the delegation. Okay. Um, the delegation, by the way, represents both chambers of parliament, and uh, there are three political parties represented um, among the delegates. Could you introduce yourselves, please? Uh, <coughs> My name is Mr. Keting Nan. I am a Kachin nationality. I am a chairman of the Unity and Democracy Party of Kachin State. I live in northern parts of Myanmar. And I am a secretary of National Races Affair Committee. Thank you. My name is Lam Ying Wu. I'm the chairman of the International Relations Committee, the Titul Do. I belong to the Union Solidarity and Development Party. Thank you. Tura Ushwiman. I'm the speaker of Titul Do, Myanmar. I'm um, Uteng Sui, Chairman of Communication, Transportation, and Construction Committee for Titus Lotra. Thank you. I am Dr. Wei Mian. I am the member of the Public Account Committee of the Titus Lotra. Thank you. Dr. Muong from NLE Party, Party of the famous Thompson City. <laughs> and member of parliament and also the member of trade and economic committee. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, if you'd like to make some opening remarks and then turn it back to me and I'll turn it to 
Rangit. Mengalaba. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you all for extending a warm welcome to me and to the parliamentary delegation from Myanmar. I would like to extend our appreciations to the National Democratic Institute. Institute for Representative Government, the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, and the United States Agency for International Development for putting this program together so that members of parliament from Myanmar could visit the United States. I came to the United States because I would like to enhance the friendly relations and cooperation that we currently enjoy and to learn about democracy being exercised in the United States and how the U.S. Congress works so that starting best practices may be applied in our country. I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. As you all know, Myanmar is now a new nation on the wall with imagined democracy. <coughs> we are present in multi-party democracy and market-oriented economy. Our objective is to make Myanmar become a modern, developed nation. The government that exists during the time of parliamentary democracy, the Revolutionary Council, <coughs> the Burmese Socialist Program Party, the State Law and Order Restoration Council, and the State Peace and Development Council, all had tried and change the country also. But despite benevolent aims and goals, Myanmar had yet to become a nation that we had anticipated. Sadly, we continue to see some disappointments and in a probably poverty continues to affect majority of our population. Past was difficult for everyone, but no one will gain anything from it by indulging in criticisms and blames us at present. There is a need to adopt new policies and programs to pave the way for a good present and a secure future. When we look back at the recent history of our country, one can see that our record concerning national unity, reconciliations, prevalence of rules of law and tranquility and peace within the country had been poor. Unity and reconciliations are inseparable for peace. Like the rule of law and tranquility are inseparable from maintaining peace in the country. I cannot be achieved with declared intentions and slogans. It must nurture with mutual respect, openness, 
transparency, accountability, a sense of responsibility, and more importantly, we need to create an inclusive society. In order to achieve all of these noble objectives, we are committed to build a modern, developed nation to the parts of multi-party democracy and market-oriented economy. Myanmar now has legislatures composed of representatives of the people and a head of government and union ministers <coughs> whose appointments are confirmed by the Pidangsukluto. Our parliament, or our, you might call it at the Congress in our country. And the parliament has been undertaking also to tangibly meet our four main objectives. Because the objectives are our national interest, national unity, reconciliation, prevalence of rules of law and tranquility, and peace within the country are actually connected to each other. And without tangible results, democratic reforms effort may lead to something else. Members of the parliaments are working together free from party bias, regional bias, racial bias, and religious bias, so that tangible results are achieved and people lead a better life. Our parliament has also established three committees, namely citizen fundamental rights, democracy and human rights, national research affairs and internal peace implementation, and the rule of law and tranquility so that our objectives are met. It has been said that legislatures are the soul of nation and lifeblood of democratic practices. It is the responsibility of legislatures to enact laws that will protect and promote the interests of the people and the nation. Legislatures also have a monitoring function to ensure that <coughs> laws and acts are offset by an all concerned. At the same time, the legislature also needs to accept the role of the executive and the judiciary in maintaining democratic principle of check and balances. Furthermore, the legislature must take into consideration about criticisms <coughs> and suggestions that may be put forward by the public and the media. I welcome comments and advice on this matter. Parliamentarians are the representatives of the people. The motto of our Luto, the parliament, states that the people's voice is the Lodov's voice. The people's will is the Lodov's will. And that the people's expectations will be met by the Lodov's implementation. It is through legislation that we seek to fulfill the hopes of the, our people to promote their interests. We have achieved such as to a certain extent in less than three years. We may need to put in more efforts on some of our endeavors. We have come to the United States to learn more about your system so that we may improve areas that need intention in our system. I believe that the best place to learn about it's here. So I would like to request you to explain to me about it and give me valuable knowledge. 
particularly in distributing powers for the le legislative, executive, and judiciary bodies because such process has not been practiced in Myanmar for a long time. According to the constitutions, authority has been equal distributed in Myanmar, but when Parliament undertakes necessary measures, some trying to look at it in different perspectives. They reason that the Parliament is not responsive to the government. One should keep it in mind that our actions are implemented in accord with democratic prices. We need to have determination in our endeavors and it may be achieved only through changing our mindset and creating an inclusive society. Economically, Myanmar could have seen better results. Myanmar is a resource-rich country and geographically located at a strategic location in Asia. The parliament has passed a new foreign investment law and the government has been inviting foreign investors. Many investors pay a great deal of interest in Myanmar. Also, but there is a thin wall still standing on the road that connects between investors and Myanmar. We need to bring down that wall so the people from our two countries can benefit from economic cooperation. Sanctions at one time were aimed to have a certain impact. But now, time has come for it to say goodbye because a system that people are in favor of, it is place. And these very people need to benefit from the system to avoid concerns and doubts on the very system that they are involved of it. For the people, to a vote, toxins concern. We need to bring down the poverty that they pay facing. We need to try to overcome all these difficulties. Our way forward is to make sure that democracy thrives on Myanmar and educate our people about democratic values and practices. There may be a need to educate the executive branch also because years of authoritarian rules have made things difficult in Myanmar. Most rules and regulations were designed to protect the institutions and not the people. In all democracies, the government will be held accountable and legislative will perform the oversight. I was once told by a colleague that democracy is a culture and a process. We are well aware of the fact that we cannot build democratic institutions or way of life overnight. Democracies in Myanmar is a process that is involving and the parliament has the noble responsibility to make sure that the process will endure. The previous government had already paved the way so that in the future the people may join a sustainable democratic system and an economy that is oriented. All we need to do is to make sure that the system will endure. Myanmar has already received international support significantly. The people in Myanmar could have been a better future by now if our reform process is further supported by removing barriers that are still on way. 
for the interest of our people and the international community, we wish to see that continuous democratic system is deeply rooted in the Myanmar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm now going to turn it over to Rangita Da Silva from the Wilson Center, who will ask the first two questions. Then we'll open up the questions for the for the audience. Thank you, Peter. At a time of profound change in Burma, we are indeed delighted to engage with the <coughs> honourable speaker Shweman and the distinguished delegation, as <coughs> Honourable Jane Harman just <coughs> stated. We have been delighted to heed the call to action that was issued to us by Dosu when she asked us to engage with not just women parliamentarians in Burma, but women leaders at the grassroots level. And through their work, we know the critical importance, the pivotal importance of male leadership in advancing women's <coughs> leadership. It was the president of Burma who appointed the first woman minister in Burma the Minister for Social Service and Rehabilitation. You also have six women deputy ministers, as well as three women ministers at the regional and state level. And we know that more is to come, that more women will be at the <coughs> helm, more women will be in the forefront of leadership in Burma. <coughs> ကျော်ကြလိုပါတယ်ကျမတို့ဒီဂျောင်းစမ်းစုကြီးကျမတို့ဟမာတက္ကသာရှိပါတယ်အမျိုးသမီဒီလွတ်တော်ကိုယ်
Our citizens pay great respect to the rights of the citizen, which I am also included. And uh, first of all, I would like to also uh, give my high regards to the, the, to the ladies that are in this room also. Don San Suji, Tamara, Pipo, Kesama, Fazibon Chigan Ubi, Kantachi, so you moody, she de Sura, Piavare. But I understand that there are some certain concerns with regards to Don San Suji being able to run for president. Tenoru Lodoma, Fazibon Chigan Ubi, Lila don't that be. And our parliament, a commission has been established to make necessary review and to make amendments to the constitution. We have an and uh, legislation which allows uh, constitutions to be amended. So you can see what here is that the constitution is also uh, included in one of the existing laws that we have in our country. Our parliament is mainly responsible for enacting law. Therefore, we are giving priorities in passing legislation that will serve and protect the interests of our country and our people. And in the process, we are responsible for making necessary review on our existing laws, and if necessary, they will be revoked or substituted by a new one, which also includes our current constitution. So the main responsibility of that commission is that to make necessary reviews on our existing laws. So when we do that, uh, some of the uh, some of the measures can be undertaken within the parliament, but some has to be some needs to reach out reach out to our people. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Building on your comments, as you know, and as we all know, there's an enormous ferment for change in the legal system in Burma, and as part of that change. The president himself had requested the women's groups in Burma to make recommendations for
for a women's protection law. And a women's protection law technical group has been set up, and different groups have come together to make recommendations for a women's protection law that very comprehensively reviews the legal system in Burma and identifies areas for reform, including that of anti-violence against women, trafficking of women and girls, issues of equal rights to property, equal rights to divorce and marriage, and equal rights to health. So given this promulgation, these recommendations for a new women's protection law, I would like to ask you what kind of support as male parliamentarians you hope to provide for a women's protection law? Exactly. I will support. <laughs> <laughs> so like I earlier mentioned, uh, uh, our parliament is responsible for making legislation. So on behalf of on behalf of the uh, male members of the uh, <laughs> uh, parliament, uh, I would like to assure you that once this bill is has come to our parliament, uh, we will make sure that we will support the bill. Thank you, thank you, speaker. Thank you. <laughs> We'll open it up to questions from the audience. Um, our, our time is relatively brief, so uh, please identify yourselves and, and keep your comments. Don't, don't make comments. <laughs> Just ask a question. Yeah. Kumar, go ahead. My question is about Rohingya Muslims. Mm -hmm. There are, there is a new system that was introduced, allowing only two children, for, only for Rohingya Muslims. This also touch on women's issues. You, as a person, as a speaker, do you support that? If not, what steps? you will take to oppose that. My quick question relating to that is, there is an increased attack on Muslims in Burma, not Rohingyas, but other Muslims. There is a campaign called 969 stickers. There are groups going around distributing these stickers and indirectly discriminating Muslims through that. Will you take any steps to prevent that? Thank you. But I'm very, I'm very honored to know that you are meant to, you are marking me as a powerful speaker. According to our constitution also states that there shall be no dis discriminations, which also includes religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. It also states that citizens shall receive their full uh, fundamental rights. Rohingya 
కోకో దోమలు విషయం ఏం తినరు ఈ పెంగల్ ఈ కోకో దోమలు విషయం ఏం తినరు కూవే ఈ బాధా బాముతి తీరో కూవే జారే ముస్లిం బాధా వినేవు ఉబ్రియ కోయా సస్సన్ సాంసు మిషివా therefore according to our law the uh, discrimination does not exist whether you are a rohingya or whether you call them bengali or even in the religions uh, for for instance uh, uh, or the muslims religion that you believe in eri lu ubri u sanjin chu phao pi do sa de so lu yin So if one has violated the existing law, he will be actions will be taken against him under the existing law. Hello, you sound in my ma. So no sudden pure wrong are power. So no nang ma. Pure reason movie ane mushi ni ba pi. So I earlier mentioned that uh, uh, in the process of taking uh, effective legal actions in our country there is still some weaknesses in terms of the rule of law therefore we are uh, try working hard so that the rule of law will prevail in Myanmar ဘုနကမိတ်ဆွေပြောတဲ့ Therefore, uh, like uh, you have earlier mentioned about uh, some uh, 969 group uh, uh, putting some bad uh, uh, with banners, and uh, uh, this matter will be uh, actions will be taken in accordance with law. And I believe that uh, respective uh, agencies. in your mall or or have already taken actions now to who you can be buri da mano be ma khali ne ya ya u ya me so le ti san ne pat de lu so no lu do bu ta zong de ya tin pya sa ne me shi ba u and with regards to the two child policy in buri dao and mondo uh this matter was not uh, informed to the government uh, to the parliament and so no And our parliament has did, has not also passed the law on that. Is it mine? Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, I'm Sarah Nadia Sobani. Um, I'm a former member of the Pakistan Parliament and I'm a public policy scholar at the Wilson uh, Center and I'm working on um, Muslim majority countries and their treatment of minority populations so I'm particularly interested in Burma um which is sort of the other way around but going back to Rangita's uh, earlier question which is extremely important about the president of Myanmar having to have military experience recently in Pakistan uh, the president of Pakistan gave up his powers and article 58 to be and the parliament amended the constitution to make sure there would be no more military <laughs> uh, dictators sitting in our presidency which weakened the parliament and the representatives of the people from doing their job so um going back to rangita's question are you as parliamentarians uh, bringing any laws do you have a committee set up um what actual steps are you taking to change and revise and amend this law for president thank you thank you for that you know you know chama ro dia public policy ya scholar phit ba de di thu thu bi no tain da lu ne zu lu ne pat de ki sa de so yo ni na phit ba de you know so so a po li tam da ye tam da ဒီအဖြစ်ရွေးကောက်တီမြောက်ခြင်းခံမယ်ဆိုတဲ့အရေးချင်းနေတယ်မှာစေရေးတွေ့ကြုံပါမယ်ဆိုတဲ့အချက
Belu soalnya bu si mana si bale, belu tu boleh bale. Kena kalle, cebi bai. I believe I have already answered that. Nengan de, nengan dah mian. Nengan macam apa? Jauh ni, jauh. I believe I have already answered to that. Nengan de, nengan dah mian. Aku ni, jauh. No citizens' fundamental rights. Ada mian kau nega, jauh dah le. Amu tu mian ya aku ni. A woman's rights. Masuk show ni aw. In order for, in order, in order for them not to lose these rights. Eh, jenaru. We are responsible for giving necessary considerations. For that reason, we have established a commission at the uh, parliament. Okay, thank you. Um, go ahead. You, well, why don't you go for it, Kelly? There's a big problem for ordinary people with land confiscation, both in the past and today. What actions will the parliament take to address land confiscation? Uh, ဒီအောက်ခြေလူကန်စာမှာစင်ရဲမွဲတင်ဝင်ဖြစ်ပါတယ်အထူးသဖြင့်တော့လေယာမြေတွေတင်းစိတ်ခံရတဲ့ကိ
Uh, I'm proud to say I was recently taken off Burma's banned foreigner list. Mm -hmm. See how long that lasts. Um, I'd like to ask uh, two questions uh, of general nature. One is, uh, uh, how serious a threat to the continuation of Burma as a union do you see the centrifugal forces, uh, uh, ethnic separate separation forces by these ethnic groups? How serious a threat is that the continuation of the country as a union? And how do you see the role of the military continuing uh, in the government? Thanks. <coughs> ไอ้ก็ญาณนี้ยังจมมาว่าတော့อลุตบออ่าตะนี้ตัวเสียဖြစ်ပါတယ်ကျွန်မီကိုနဲ့ဘူးမေးကြီးပါတယ်ပထမ